And we're good. Okay. <clears throat> welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of Geek Vibes Interview brought to you by Geek Vibes Nation. I'm your host, Don Fisher. And today I have with me a living legend. She's an executive producer, singer, speaker, and a 15-year WWE host who now hosts the hit show Chasing Glory, which premieres today on the WWE Network. Welcome, the one and only Lillian Garcia. Hey, thank you so much. Love that introduction. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Awesome. Crazy time, corona time. I know we're all kind of doing what we can, want to do yep. more. Yeah, you know, the year has been with the highs and the lows for sure. I feel like we've been inside of a snow globe and just it's been shaken and shaken and shaken. And it is all about where the pieces are going to land. And I know that during the summertime, because we've had Chasing Glory going on since 2016, but during the summer, it just got so nuts with Corona and, you know, all the protests and everything that was happening. It felt like the time to step back, take a pause, do a lot more listening, study, learn. And I'm glad we did because then the WWE reached out and talked about putting Chase and Gloria on the network and we were planning on coming back in the fall anyway. So it was a perfect marriage and here we are today. Yeah, and that's, that's crazy. That was one of the questions I was going to ask is how that, that partnership happened because, I mean, you, like you said, you've been doing it since 2016 and um, from what I've seen, uh, the responses are always great. The guests love it. Um, and it seems that it, the, the title itself is interesting because we're, you know, you're focusing on these uh, athletes, entertainers, wellness professionals, um, and kind of their journey, whether it's, you know, not just their journey into their professional life, but their journey as a person, but yeah. also it's your chasing, you're chasing glory. It's, you're also from uh, the ones I've, I've watched it. You're also uncovering stuff and, and going back to things that uh, you experienced and you, your uh, journey and to where you are now. Yeah. You know, that was the thing is when we first started the podcast, uh, we had, it was called making their way to the ring. And so it was really all about the stories going to the ring and all, but it just felt like the right thing to change it. When I changed it in 217, I was like, no, this is really about like, everyone's chasing some kind of glory. And what does glory mean? Right. It means so different to so many different people, um, something different. So I decided too, like, what does my own chase for glory mean and look like? And I was like, I can't ask my guests to be open and vulnerable and share as much as they have. And then me not do the same. And that's when I came out as well, talking about how, you know, for years I was bullied when I came from Spain to the U S and how I was able to adapt and still make something of myself and not let that overcome me. Right. And use that in my advantage. And then same thing when I battled bulimia for years, and yet I'm still in the public hot eye and how not to allow the public eye and judgment to take me down and keep me down in that path of being bulimic and you know body dysmorphia and all and there's I I constantly unveil things that I've been through my own challenges with my marriage or you know whatever it is because that's life right and if the more we share with each other about our own struggles and our own journey I feel the more people are going to stop feeling alone and suicide rates are through the roof right now. And we need to talk about this in order to save people's lives. Yeah, and, and that's one of the the biggest takeaways I got from the show that I that I love is the fact that I know your one of your goals is that we have these larger than life people that we see and bringing them down to like, at the end of the day, they're human. They right. go through things that we don't necessarily see. So it's easy for you to watch a, a person on a show, get angry at them and like, how come I would have done it this way? I would have done it this way. And then they, your, your show unravels that and they're like, no, I was going through X, Y, Z. And then you step back and like, oh, I didn't realize that they <laughs> right. a person, you know? Less judgment, yeah. less judgment. I think that's the biggest thing that I've even taken away is I have been personally backstage working with these superstars and didn't know that they were going through things themselves, right? I'm going to give you a perfect example, even my husband, for because my episode today, dropping with Braun Strowman. 
I mean, he's an awesome guy and I got to, you know, work with him, but Braun was very guarded for a while. And even my husband who met him some years ago, he looked at me and he goes, Braun didn't really act like he wanted to say hi, or, you know, then we find out today, right in the interview, when it all comes out, we find out that he was really going through a dark time. And just to give you guys a glimpse at the interview, like he talks about how he would go home. He was going through a really bad breakup. He went back to a house that he had just bought. He only had like a mattress in there. He had the chair in the corner. That was the chair from, from WWE, like one of the pay-per-view chairs. He would sit there for like seven hours and just stay in his head and stay in his head. And he said it was grueling and nobody knew that that was going on in his life. Right. And so we expect people to be just always perfect and always have everything, you know, uh, know everything that they are supposed to be doing and be the superstar on TV and not take into account that they're going through something really at home, whether it's, you know, a, a loved one being sick or a breakup, or your career is just not going the way you thought it was supposed to go. You know, whatever it is, it's like if we can just take a moment and realize that and have less judgment on people, I think this world will be a whole lot better. For sure. <laughs> uh, and I know the uh, the last one, or the most recent one I watched was uh, the one with Paige. Yeah. And I know for years she had tons of flack and I know in this, in the sports entertainment industry, especially in wrestling, it's always a lot harder for women because either A, they're looked at as just like a pretty face or mm -hmm. they're too good. And it's like, how, why you shouldn't be that good for, for whatever reason. And for her to be able to contextualize to you, like everything she was going through, uh, you know, I feel like it helps a lot. Because, you know, me personally, I know kind of, what it takes to in any kind of sport i played football for a long time so i know oh, the cool. sacrifices and i know all the things you have to do that people don't see behind the scenes right. all the blood sweat and tears and uh I, I think the page one the booker team one i watched recently these people like whether or not they look like superheroes because that's what, how we view them kind of they're these giant hulking people um they're a lot more vulnerable than we give them credit for right. and i'm sure especially with like Paige uh, and a lot of the females and maybe including yourself that in that realm, you go home with a lot more baggage than you, than maybe the, your male counterparts would. Yeah, it, it's not easy, right? Being a female in a male dominated industry, but you know, you got to be there because you have to break that barrier. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to break the barrier, not only just be like rah, rah, re women mm -hmm. and just, you know, down with the men. I've never been with the, at all. I just think it's a beautiful thing to be like, hey, there's room for both of us. And both of us add something special to the show. Mm -hmm. And that is more apparent than ever now. Uh, you know, when the male uh, matches always came on and the female matches came on, it would be like bathroom break now, no more. You can, you know, people are looking forward to that female match in there and knowing that they can hold their own. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing, but that's a, that's a testament to the women that came and were like, we got to just break down this barrier. And yeah, it's, it's going to be hell for a little bit, but Paige is a perfect example of sharing and being so vulnerable that she is ultimately my guests that are vulnerable. They're brave. They're showing their bravery, that they are just taking that curtain down and sharing what they've been through, what they're currently going through so that people can understand their challenge and identify with them. And Paige is someone that I've had on the show three times. And there's a reason the chase for glory continues, right? It keeps evolving, but you can show the evolution of someone. And I think every single interview that, she, that I've had her on, it's been so interesting and fascinating. And now she's, you know, she shared how she's sober and her sobriety and how she feels so good. And, and she has a, a true love in her life that, you know, that companionship she was looking for. And I think it's a beautiful journey to watch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, to your journey, I, I, if, I'm, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you um, popped up on the scene in WWE in 99. Yeah, August so, 99. 
So right, right in the middle of the Attitude Era, which is yeah. <laughs> most wrestling fans' favorite era. Um, and I and I remember I was a '99. I was probably in fifth grade. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! <laughs> so I remember seeing you and what and you know I don't think I realized at that time, but later on looking back at it, what stuck out to me was the the juxtaposition of like you. You were kind of like shy. And you're like very nice and then you have like the rock or stone cold in your face like giving you you know the, their persona yeah um, so what was it like stepping into that world at that time yeah it was not easy i'm not gonna lie because i was the first female also to come from outside of the wrestling world and everybody there didn't know that i had been hired without any kind of training whatsoever like when i say no training i mean for the job of ring announcer now, interviewer, obviously, I felt like I could do that job because I had already been in radio for years. I had been hosting for years, but I had never known what a ring announcer does. And, you know, I thank Howard Finkel for helping me so much. But I also thank the superstars who, little by little, they realized that I genuinely love wrestling. I genuinely wanted to do a really good job for them. I genuinely wanted to be there. It wasn't like I'm going to use this platform to then leap to somewhere else, which shows you how long I stayed there, right? Um, and now I continue to be in the wrestling world by doing these interviews and even, you know, still announce for the PFL, the Professional Fighters League. I just love combat sports. I, I love anything that has to do with it. So I think that they, when they really saw that and The Rock and Stone Cold, Mick Foley, I have a photo of all three of us in there having beers. I'm like, they saw it. They saw that I, I wanted to be there. And so they were embracing that. And I can't thank them enough because they made the transition a whole lot better for me. Did uh, the idea for, for Chase and Glory come uh, during your tenure uh, with WWE? Great question. So I started this idea or this idea came to me in 2004. Okay. Yeah. So in 2004, I had been in the locker room now with the women for like four and a half years or five years. Mm -hmm. And just the stories that they would tell you know, in the locker room as we're being vulnerable and open with each other, I was like, wow, if the superstar, if the audience knew this, I think they would really learn from it. They would grow from it. They would benefit from it. They would be empowered by it. They would be more attached to you and your character. They would cheer for you more. I just felt like there was just this beautiful synergy that could be created by that. I went to WWE with the concept. Um, it just wasn't the right timing. And they didn't, this was before Total Divas. This is before the network. This is before having the channels to really air something like that. But when I left in 2016 and I was taking care of my dad, who was passing away, my dad looked at me and he goes, what are you going to do, Lil? I feel so guilty. You're, you know, you've left WWE and I'm, I'm going to be passing. And I just don't want you, you know, to be left with nothing. And I said, well, dad, I had this idea in 2004. He's like, do it. I love the idea. So I went to AfterBuzz. We started, we actually started on video first. And the beautiful thing about this whole thing is that we launched in November, 2016. My dad was able to watch the episode, um, a few episodes before he passed on Christmas day in 2016, that same year. And it was, I feel like I had his stamp of approval. I feel like the success is him also helping me from the other side. Um, I feel like it's just been a labor of love since day one and a passion that I've had. And I always tell people, do what you're passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life. And so even though we work hard, it's been great, gratifying work. Do you, uh, cause it seems like with your energy, your aura, um, and you know, did you foresee this trajectory? Cause I know, you know, following you on social media, you're doing a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, not just announcing for like PFL, but you do the um, fitness. Know, yeah. And you, you know, you have your other interviews that you do. And I, I saw yeah. something with. Um, oh, Prep Point. Yeah, yeah. And I saw AP Biology. You're doing something. Like, yes, AP Bio. Yeah. <laughs> busy. Um, did yeah. you kind of, did you, is that something that you foresaw or something that you, really wanted to, to do or are you just kind of going with the flow? 
Well, I love going with the flow. I always say be attached. I think it's Wayne Dyer who said this, be attached to nothing and open to everything. And that's why I'm open to everything. When WWE came to my, you know, my, my foreground here, I was like, me wrestling, what? But I was open to it and look at the career that I've created and the opportunity and the travel. It was amazing. So I always say that. And so fitness has always been a big part of my life. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing this. And RP Strength came along and I, I love their whole concept. And so I partnered up with them to do, bring fitness more to people to tell them how important, especially now during this coronavirus, man, the way to get through the virus, if you get the virus is to be healthy to begin with. And so you have to get your health under like just the, the best you can possibly do so that you can combat any virus that comes right. to your way. Right. So that's why I think fitness has been very important in my life. And then singing, obviously I've loved that, uh, since day well, I, I started singing since I was five. So that's always been a big part of my life, but yeah, then AP bio came along and asked me if I wanted to do that. And I was like, sure. It was two days of shooting. It was so much fun on set. Um, and then prep point, that was something that I had pitched to the PFL to get to know the, the fighters before they step into the cage in 2021. And so we did that prep point and now it's been announced that I'll be back in the cage for 2021. So nice. I like to stay busy, I, yeah. but, but again, it's staying busy with things that I love to do. Right. And that's the thing that I keep telling people is it's okay to be busy. Now I also balance it out. I make sure, like I said this morning, going to the beach for the walk, like, you know, having that time with my husband, my husband and I work together, which is great. Um, so we get to see each other, but stay busy, stay balanced, but do what you love. Nice. So, so we've got to wrap up. Uh, one, yeah. one last question. Is there a dream, um, person that you would love to have on the show? So I love all my interviews. I, I'm excited for every single one of them, to be honest with you, because, you know, I'm the lucky one and whatever the listener is that has followed me on this journey, there are some people that have watched every single episode, which we have nearly 150 episodes. And they all tell me the same thing. Wow, I learned so much from that. And some of them, they didn't even know the person that it was, whether it was an entrepreneur or somebody that I had on, they didn't know who it was, but they've heeded my words of take a chance. I promise you, you're going to learn something that you can apply to your life. So I don't ever like to be like, hey, I can't wait for this person because right. their interview is going to be more special because I don't think any, any interview is more special than the other. I really don't. Uh, each one of them has an amazing moment, but I, I would, there are some few people that I would like to interview just same as, you know, some of the ones that I already have um, that I've done or some that I know that are coming. And I've said this in another show, I said, Ronda Rousey intrigues me, you know, Roman Reigns, I would love to talk to. So there's a lot of people that I would like to just continue speaking to, but I'm excited for every one of my guests. I really, they're just so special. Uh, and lastly, where can everyone find you on social media? Okay, so I'm at Lillian Garcia with one L in the middle on Instagram and Twitter, Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. YouTube is just youtube.com slash Lillian Garcia. So that all of that is easy. And then for everything Chasing Glory, where we really devote an entire page to it is on Instagram. And that is at Chasing Glory so that you can keep up with everything. We have contests on there. I pop on every week, reading reviews. Uh, and then we are also gonna be launching at the end of, like every Thursday we launch on YouTube, what we call the CG speed, not speed round. They're hot seat questions with my guests. They're a lot of fun. So I want everybody to tune in on that as well. Yeah. But more importantly, the WWE Network, the free version, free which version. is so great. You can watch the show there. And that starts today. And I just really want to encourage everybody to take a chance on the show, watch it for yourself, and you see what everyone's talking about. Yeah, and I want to uh, uh, say thank you. And we appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I love the show. So yeah, everyone check it out because there's always something you can get out of any of them. Uh, and a lot of them are the, the people that you love and that you watched growing up and now. So um, yeah. Appreciate you stopping by. Everyone, please check it out on the free WWE Network. Um, yeah, Lillian Garcia. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. And we're out.